Hey, this is Jay from Stitch in Time in Bemidji, Minnesota, where today I'm going to show you how, how to design these really cool cork coasters for yourself. This is Stitch in Time. Let's get creative. Okay, so, that, so this design is made with two pieces. You have a front and a back. And I'm going to be showing you how to do that today here in our uh, Canvas workspace. Workspace is the desktop version of Brothers Scan and Cut software. And so you may be wondering where to get that. Let me show you where this is. If you go to the Canvas workspace, if you are, it's going to be canvasworkspace.brother.com. This is where you could log in to use the online version. If you scroll down below, you're going to see Canvas Workspace, and this is where you can download it. So if you have struggles with your internet connection, you can download this software, and it's for Windows and Mac, which is really nice in the increasing Mac world that we're living in. So let's get started. This is we're going to be working with this today, and to get started, we're going to create a circle. And circles are really easy. We go over on the left-hand side here, we click on our shapes. And let's get our screen back into the middle here. And down here on the left-hand side, we see circles. There's a whole bunch of shapes in here. If you don't see the ones you want, just scroll down. You can grab this and roll down here as well. And we're going to click once on a circle. And when you click on it, it automatically inserts it into your works, your mat for your workspace here. And we can see on the right-hand side here, that the size is 3.94. Well, I don't necessarily want a 3.94, but how did it get here? Well, on the right-hand side here, there is a Edit button, and there is a Properties button. And the property is where you can change whether you want it filled with a color, whether you want a line, you know, so we can do some fun things with that in here. But I want to go into the Edit button. I want to change this to 3.75. And so I just type that in. Now notice that because this maintain aspect ratio box is checked, all I have to do is just tab over to the next box and it automatically resizes it for me. Now we're going to be cutting out both a back and a front for this project. And so this is the back and I need to make two more of them in this row. And so the way we can do that is we can right click on this and we can go duplicate and it automatically has another one there. Or if you're used to uh, the keyboard controls, you can go uh, Control C or Copy, and then you can click in the right click in the space out here and le and then left click on Paste, and it does the same thing. But it's kind of nice that they give you uh, the duplicate button right there. Now these things you want a, just a little bit of space in between them, but I'd like to have them all in a row. In a line. So how do I do that? Well, I can left click in here so I don't have anything selected and then I'm going to click and drag a box so it gets all three of them. Now when you do, it comes up with our edit screen and we have some more tools down here. Here's where we can use our alignment tools. And I, I have them all spaced um, horizontally the way I want it or vertically. I don't want to do this because it would pile them all up on the left. But here's the one I want. I want to line up the middles and look at that. It puts them all together and I am all ready to go. Now I'm going to actually move this down to the bottom so that it's not in the middle of my workspace. And it's going to go there. Now I need one more circle so I can make my S for the front one. So I'm going to take this one, right click on it, and then I'm going to duplicate that. And then I just click and drag that up here and we can start working away with this. Now I'm going to go get a shield first. So if you remember that, that um, the shield shape that's around this edge here, that is not built into our software. So how did I get that? Well, the way we did that is we first of all went over into, I just went to the uh, internet and I went up to Google's in the search bar up here and I went for a shield crest outline. I see it came up here because I already searched for it before. Why did I say, well, a shield and a crest, 
those are two different ways of describing the same thing. And so it narrows it down to be more what I'm looking for. And outline usually gives me black and white images. And so when I click on that, look what happens here. I have all of these things. And I can click on either this little images here or the images button right here. And if you notice, there's one right here. It says a blank family crest, and all I would need to do is right click on this and save the image as. Okay, now I already did this, but if I left click on here and save image as, I might name it as something else, and then I would save that onto my computer. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it back. You need to write, you need to click on it and then go here and save image as. And why? Because it's going to save it as a JPEG. You can't trace GIF, that is G-I-F, you can't trace GIF images. So I came in here and I clicked in here and this is a JPEG and so I was able to use that. So now that I have that, let's go back over to here and I need to trace that shield and get that in here. So the way I do that is I go over here to my image tracing button right on the left hand side. I'm going to say, where is this image? Well, I didn't scan it in with my machine, though I could if I had it printed out somewhere. I'm going to take one that I have on my computer. So I click the left one. Then it's going to say, where is this? Well, I know that I had this saved as a crest shield. So I'm going to open that. And then here is my, my design. You recognize it. I don't want this one down below here. And so I'm going to take my little handles here and I'm going to crop out that bottom part. Notice that there's these green or uh, aqua colored lines that is showing you the edge that it is recognizing. Notice these are black. There's none around it because we cropped it out. If I go down here, it's going to recognize that outline and put it there. So we don't want that. We can use that to crop out. It's not. It's no biggie. If there was sticking up above here, I could go crop these out later, but it makes it really easy when it's like this. And then up here is this little button that always irritates me, and so I have to remember to uncheck this. Because if I leave this on and click OK, it's going to take this whole picture and put it behind my workspace. I don't like that. It's irritating. I like a clean workspace even if I don't have a clean desk at my office. So I uncheck that and watch what happens. I bring that in here and now I have my shape. I don't have anything else but just the shape that it traced. Now for this sake, uh, for the sake of this class, I'm going to resize this. Now again, I can go down here and just click on this and change this. And notice my numbers over here change for me. And so I can bring this down to whatever size I want. But I know what the size is. So the easiest thing for me is just a double click in here. So I get that all blue. And I'm going to change that height to 2.75. And then hit enter. And look at that. It resized it exactly where I wanted it to be. Now I need a double cut line. Because if you notice... I'm cutting out this groove in here. See, the, all, everything that you see that's not blue is the top layer, and the blue is part of the bottom cork. Ah, I gave away a little bit of my trick there, but that's what this is for. I need to cut out this groove so you can see what is behind there. Let's, let's get on and do this. So I need to make an, a line on the outside of this. Well, over here in the property or in the edit button, if I scroll to the bottom, there's this button here that says offset. When I click that, it says, how wide do you want this offset? How far away from it? Well, I know from practicing that I want it at 0.12, which is about an eighth of an inch. Not quite, but close. I want it on the outside, not on the inside of that line. And I want the bevel... The, the edges to be beveled, so they're kind of sharp points. I don't want everything just rounded off. If I was doing something circular, I would use more of the circle one, but I want the bevel. And the original line, I can either delete it or set it as a drawing line or leave it as is. I want to leave it as is because I want to uh, cut both lines. So I click OK, and now look at that. Now what happens here is if I just take this, OK, I'm going to take this and move it over there. Look. 
look what happens. It's no longer lined up there anymore. Oh, man, and I can try and get it back in. But here's what you need to know. There's a magic button up here. It's called the undo. It's the uh, oops button. It's the oops eraser. You click that little undo, and it goes right back where it belongs. Isn't that nice? So how do I keep those from moving apart? Well, I can click up here in the corner and drag a box so that it selects both of them. See that? There's two lines there. And there's several ways. I can right-click on here, and there's a button that says Group. Or, drag it around there to get it moved again. Or I can go Control plus G on my keyboard. And it does the same thing. And notice the second line disappeared because these are now one image. They're no longer separate. I can ungroup them later if I want to, but they're all in place. So now I'm just going to take that and position that right in the middle of my circle. Now normally I could use those alignment arrows, but because my shape is not perfectly centered, I may want to... I, don't, I can't use it here because watch what happens. If I use... If I draw a box around both of these, and then I use my alignment tools to put the center there. Oh, it, it sets it up too high. And there's hardly any space up here and lots of space down at the bottom. So I don't like that. But I can use it for the left and right. That's good. But I need to move this down. And so what I'll do is I'll click on this. And seeing as it's left and right perfectly, I'll use my down arrow on my keyboard to bring it down to where I think... Yeah, that's about right, right there. That's where I like that. Okay, now we have to go get our S. So where did, how did I do that? Where did I get the S from? Because normally, uh, let's see here. Normally, you can go over here to text, and you can choose from all of these fonts that are up in here. But, and then this will also look for all the fonts on your keyboard. But I'm going to show you something else as well, because sometimes there's fonts that I have that you don't have, and you kind of wonder where you can get some of these really cool designs. Well, here's what I did. I went back to the Internet, and I searched for Old English font, the initial S. And look what comes up here. And then I looked in images, and there's a whole bunch of them. And so I was able to take one and look at that. Nope, it wasn't that one. But you get the idea. I was I was looking for one. Here we go. That's the one that I wanted. And so I downloaded that picture. Remember, I can click on it here. And then I can right-click on it and save image as. And it's going to be a JPEG. And look, I have it saved here right as a letter S. So I won't save it again. So now let's get back over to our workspace. Now I need to bring my S into here. How do I trace that? Because that's what I'm going to be doing with it. I'm going to be tracing that letter S. Well, I go over to my Trace button again, and I'm going to say it's an image on my computer. I'm going to go down here to letter S. I'm going to open this, and there it is. Now, I want you to notice this. I don't know if you can see it on, on the screen here real well, but notice that there's this teal colored line around all these things, but it's not in here. How am I going to cut that out in there? Because otherwise, it's only going to cut on this outside line. Well, if you look over here, there's tracing options. This is the tracing the outer edge only. Or I can go trace by areas by color. And this is where it, it traces all the areas, both inside and out. And that's what I want. But again, I don't want to have this checked. I don't want to bring that picture in over with me. Also... Whenever you're doing trace by color, I always say reduce this down to the lowest number you can for the colors you want to select. Because if you have this as five colors, it might select several shades of gray right along the edge of here. And we want to minimize that. So now we click OK. And there it comes in with my S. Now, I want to show you something. I'm going to try and zoom in here. Nope. Notice that there's a little darker line in the middle here than in the outside. And the reason being is, is that it traced all of the black, but then it also traced the white. And what you see is the little bit of variation where those gray edges were in between there. I don't want to cut this twice. I don't want to cut on the one line and on the other one. 
And so what I can do is I can just click once in here and watch I'm going to click and drag I'm going to drag that out. There you can see. See my shape is still there, but this part has come out. And then I can just press the delete key on my keyboard and it's gone. Now I don't have to drag it out. I can just select this and press the delete key and it is gone as well. Now I'm going to zoom back out here so you can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to take this S and I need to resize this. And you say, how are you going to resize this? Where's What happened to our numbers over here? They're not there anymore. Well, we had come down here for the offset. We just need to remember to scroll back up here. And I, you can resize this to fit in here however is best. For me, I know that I want this S to be one and a half inches tall. So I go 1.5, enter, and that brings it right into, oops, select it. I'll drag it right into the center of my shield. Doesn't that look good? All right. So now what we're going to do is we are going to um, I'm going to align those things left and right. Actually, I can't do that because this has got that big long tail sticking out there. That's going to push it offset. So we're just going to leave that go where it's at. But I need to group these because if I try and drag either the S or um, see that I see I'm getting other tools around there. I want to get all of these together. And so I stop out here and I click and drag a box so it selects everything in there. And then I can ungroup it. I can go Control G, or I'm going to right click on here and go Group. Now, the one thing you have to remember is that we are going to be cutting this on the back side of the cork. So, whenever you're cutting on the back side of your material and you have letters or specific shapes, you must remember to mirror it. That's where you flip the whole thing over because otherwise your letters will be backwards when you're done. So I'm going to flip that over and that's using the little mirror key right on the right hand side and there I have it. So now how do I get the rest of these? Well, I'm going to duplicate it. There's the first one. And duplicate it again. There's the third one. And see, now I'm going to have to do a little bit of housekeeping, get these, get these uh, designs all in their own space so they all fit on there. And now I need to line them all up so they're together. So I just drag a box around all of them and say, align the middles of them vertically. And now they're all lined up together. I could group them as well. But if you go ahead and make this pattern, then on the 29th of September, 2020, I will be uh, doing a live show to show you how to cut these out and how to assemble your own coasters and with your cork. And if you need the cork fabric till then, there will be a link in the file on our website, www.sobemidji.com. I'll take you over and show you where that's at. If you go to our website, sobemidji.com, there'll be a link under your classes. It's, it's going to be under uh, the crafting classes in here. It's not here yet because I'm still working on making them. And then you'll be able to go there to order the bundle, the kit that's going to have it. There's going to be uh, several different colors. You don't have to uh, do this in blue. You'll be able to do this in red, in um, peach, in um in green and so you'll be able to, you'll be able to do a number of different colors in here that will have choices for you then okay so thank you so much and there will also i will have a file without these letters in them available for you to download at the time of purchasing your bundle if you wish to thanks much and we'll look forward to seeing you on the 29th